Greetings and welcome to an LGR thing here today. I've got something that's absolutely delightful to me and maybe to you. You know, this is something that I think appeals to a lot of ages. The Toys R Us 1993 toy catalog. Either you were a kid back then or you might have been a parent and bought your kids some of this stuff or grandparents. I know my grandparents got me some stuff straight out of this one. And I remember like circling things in it and be like, I want these. But yeah, this this is great. Sent to me by my friend Billy Core, who was just like, dude, you're going to get all sorts of nostalgia from this because I know I do. And, y you know, absolutely true. $491 in coupon savings inside. While that is true, it's mostly the, uh, you know, the actual contents of this that are going to be the most nostalgic for me. All these coupons, it's all just of stuff that uh, is already in the rest of the catalog. So let's just get straight to it. Starting with Baby Walk and Roll. You know what? <laughs> it's weird how many things that, even like girls' toys and things, that just it comes back to me in a nostalgic flood and be like, yeah, I remember these weird commercials for this. It was like a radio-controlled humanoid from Mattel. I thought it was pretty cool. <laughs> I was like, dude, he's like a robot. I want one. And uh, yeah, here we go. So we've got our Cabbage Patch Kids. The Magic Feeding Baby. I remember that. You put like peas into it and stuff. And I don't remember if it took a dump or what, but it was weird. The baby checkup. Yeah, you stick the thermometer in there. Oh, all these really weird things that I now see at Goodwill quite a lot. Yeah, I don't remember. Oh, you know, I do remember the Golden Dream Motorhome. I thought that was cool because it transfriggin' formed, man. I just like transforming anything. My size Barbie, those were always weird because they were like my height at the time. <laughs> Again, 1993, let's see how old was I? I was seven. So, prime, prime age for a lot of this stuff. I do remember wanting uh, all sorts of these kind of sets. In fact, I did actually get some of them. As a kid, I was highly interested in dollhouses and kitchen sets and uh, even dolls, man. I, I just found all of that stuff really fascinating. I like things that were much smaller than they should be. So it didn't matter if they were for girls or not, I wanted them. Especially this kind of stuff, man. All these fake foods, the play food sets, those were the best. I had a tea set too. <laughs> Kitchen sets, these were fun. Easy Bake Oven, I still want one of those. I don't know why. Fruit Snack Makers, oh dude. Those are probably terrible. And these I always found kind of weird. Like, well, mainly as an adult, I just find them weird. It's like, hey, kids, learn how to cook fries and stuff. It's all you're going to do as you grow up and your dreams are crushed. But yeah, Barney. Barney was a thing. Definitely a thing. Never was into Barney, but I do remember these. The first touch tape player. That was interesting. I think it actually played tapes. Like, legit tapes. I know there's a tape recorder made for kids, too, that would, uh, did some more advanced kind of stuff. Oh, Big Frank, dude! You had gears and stuff, and a little heart that, you know, did stuff and whatever. You had to put the monster back together. You had tools in his head. <laughs> it's crazy. You know, like, a lot of these I never played with, but I saw them. I wanted them mainly because of Saturday morning cartoon in between. You had the ads. There were ads for all of these. I can remember, like, Freaking tunes and stuff that goes in the background. Holy crap, my brother had this. That exact one. It felt like an old, like, windbreaker jacket. <laughs> it's a jacket dinosaur. You squeeze and it roared. You're like, <laughs> it sounded really bad. Probably worse than that. My apologies for your subjecting you to that impersonation. At your sketch, who didn't freaking have one of those? Of course, that was a Magna Doodle. Off brand weird crap. Yeah. Oh, a friend of mine had one of these. That drill would go down and you could... It felt like you were really drilling things, but of course you weren't. Just plastic. Look at all this stuff. Toys R Us was such a wonderful place to go as a kid. Really groomed you for consumerist uh, culture. <laughs> there's an, there's an Etch-a-Sketch. Color Etch-a-Sketch. What rich kid had one of these? Oh, it was only $15.99. Dang, I wish I had one. Yeah, man. Oh, the color writer! Holy crap, this thing was neat! I do think I messed with this in like an art class somewhere. They had one for some reason. But yeah, you could squeeze out the paints and it would spin and do these psychedelic things. The the patterns would come out of the disc there. Nickelodeon Power Painter. I 
think I remember seeing ads. I definitely remember seeing the Nickelodeon GAC copier. In fact, it was my dad. He got like a like a Sharpie or something and, you know, or just a regular ink pen, some kind of plastic thing that I could draw. And he's like, here, put your GAC on that. It'll copy it just the same. And you know what? It did. <laughs> you could just make your own thing. Holy crap, the vacuum former. That I remember wanting because you could make your own cars, like die cast Hot Wheels type cars in different pieces, put your own stickers on them. That right there, man, it was when like Need for Speed Underground came out and I'm like, hey, you could finally do this in a game. Let's, because I never had that as a kid. Wanted it like crazy. Same with the Creepy Crawlers Workshop. Although a friend of mine had a, ser a similar one. We played with that. We made like poop monsters. That pretty much got me in the mood for Spore later in life. <laughs> uh, yeah, man. Uh, classic uh, Lego sets. I still buy sets that look kind of similar to this. Just the Lego City series. I love that series. Those are still fun to put together. Never had Connects. I did have the Erector sets, though. They look more like that. Just like your basic Erector set by Meccano. Meccano. How are the... I don't care. Those were fun. Ah, here we go. Here's some computerized stuff. Now, there's what I was thinking of. That's the tape recorder by Fisher Price. I remember doing some really weird stuff with that. And, like, eventually it got, uh, like, filled with, you know, macaroni and cheese and carrots. And it wasn't mine, so I didn't care. <laughs> yeah. That looks pretty neat. VTech Video Painter. Looks like you hook it up to a TV and you can, like, draw on stuff. Looks like the U-Draw tablet from the early 90s. <laughs> Oh, these are cool. All these, all these classic, um, like computerized things for kids. Really, like little eight-bit or less computer systems in them. Some of them are really neat. I find them in Goodwill on occasion, but they're usually covered in like feces and like uh, you know hatred, so I don't pick them up. That's a cool friggin' robot. I've heard of this. It's almost like a Teddy Ruxpin, but with a robot. <laughs> which is automatically cooler in a way. Unless you had Teddy Ruxpin, which I did, so I was more nostalgic for Teddy, but uh, Deluxe Talk Boy, who the heck didn't want one of those after seeing Home Alone 2? Or, yeah, man. I think it was commercials. <laughs> Hi, kids, we're home early. Street Fighter 2 tabletop game. That's just Rock'em Sock'em Robots with Ryu and Guile. What the heck? Oh, man. These golden sight, the golden sight and sound books. Yeah, those things. Never had one. My brother did though. We had one. It was like Robin Hood. You press the things. I still remember when it sounded. Robin Hood would laugh. <laughs> and like the batteries ran down eventually, and Robin Hood was like, <laughs> that thing was fun. Eat it, Ralphs. Always thought that looked cool because of the fake, like, food he'd put in his mouth or it would come out or something. I don't know. I just remember seeing the commercials and being like, I want pizza. Yeah, more food things directed at kids. It's great. It makes me want food now as an adult. Now I want to go to, like, a pizza place. Forbidden Bridge definitely had this. This is sort of a board game. It's one of those gimmicky ones with lots of plastic and moving parts and batteries and all the pieces would get lost. But it was fun. My grandma got that for me around... 95 maybe 94 that was a lot of fun for like the one time i played it on christmas night <laughs> that was it uh ah, more barney stuff tower of the wizard king that looks sweet huh that's cool fantasy stuff is always appealing to me from that era yeah dominoes man domino rally <laughs> why you know yeah i i think those things were probably just more gimmick than any like who actually got those and played it how you're supposed to i would just stack up the dominoes and play with those on my own these little pinball sets and these little pool tables and stuff i always thought those were cool they're little tents man those are still cool i would <laughs> i'd get one of those and set them up in my living room and just like you know set up my pc in there and order like a pizza mm. all these things rich kids i didn't have them Especially like the friggin' Harley Davidson Thunder Rider. Look at that kid. He is styling. <laughs> the sunglasses and everything. Uh, what, wait, what the heck? Whale teeter totter. How is that a whale? That's just, that's like, like an alligator. Or like a, pla it's a plastic thing with plastic waves and an eye. Ah, bikes. Kids and bikes. Adults and bikes. Bikes are good. Man, if you had that bike, it'd get stolen in an instant. 
<laughs> or at least it would in my neighborhood. Man, when I grew up, every one of my bikes got stolen. I had like five of them. They're all gone. They were all stolen. Every single one of them, man. Like six years old. Got a bike, got stolen. Oh, freaking big wheels, power wheels, whatever they were. Barbie Lamborghini. That is a spoiled kid present if I've ever seen it. Well, there's there's like a Tesla one for kids nowadays. Ugh. Inline skates. These color schemes are perfect for 1993. Like, could it be any other year? No. No, it could not. Maybe 1992. <laughs> ah, sports things. I think I had that exact uh, backboard and a basketball goal. We set it up outside. It had like the sand thing at the bottom to keep it from toppling over, but sometimes it would get windy and just topple over anyway. Eh, or you try, I tried to dunk it, you know, even though I couldn't, and I'd end up like tearing apart the board. It was really cheap, but it was fun. <laughs> oh, dude, I remember wanting this thing, the Turbo Scorcher 6x6, because it's got six wheels, dude. What? A kid wouldn't be like, this guy's sick. This better than yours with four. Look at that. All these inferior. I don't care if this one's more expensive. That one's better because it's got six wheels. That's just how it works in kid logic. Yeah, these kind of generic sort of emergency vehicles never really did it for me. I did have a lot of tractors, but that's because uh, my family was largely farmers, still are, and uh, they worked at like John. Deere dealerships or something, and, and, and I had a ton of John Deere tractors. That's for sure. I did. I do remember seeing this. This thing had like claws that came out of the truck's wheels, and <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was silly. All these commercials, man. All these commercials coming back to me, and I'm just gonna go on YouTube after this and look at all the commercials. Holy crap! Matchbox Motor City car wash. Uh, that's still. So neat to me for some dumb reason because there's water and like soap in there. So you'd stick your matchbox cars in there. They go through the car wash, and get scrubbed and cleaned, and uh, and there you go. And then you'd spin them around and the air dry off or whatever. Really, it was just ruining your matchbox cars. So you could, uh, you know, you should have to buy new ones because <laughs> I don't know. Just somehow putting them through a bunch of soap and water doesn't seem like the greatest idea. They're die cast. They would probably be fine, but. I know when I did that with some of my other ones, like playing outside, they'd get ruined because the stuff would get inside the axles and they wouldn't turn as well. Crisscross crash, that was fun. Another thing to completely ruin your cars, so you'd have to go and buy more. It's very clever. Very clever here. <laughs> or maybe I'm just getting older and more cynical, but that's okay. Why were the crash test dummies such a thing? They were, though. They really were. There was like a cartoon show and everything for those guys. Mighty Max Skull Mountain Ball. Oh. Mighty Max, Mighty Max. And all this crap would go in there. And yeah, dude, it looked neat. Looked at the inside of like Skeletor's lair and stuff. <laughs> yes. These Jurassic Park toys. I always wanted some, but it, you know, whatever. I don't know. They're all by Kenner, too. I didn't know that Kenner was responsible for the Jurassic Park stuff. I guess that makes sense. Knowing uh, all the different things that they were involved in, as far as that point of licensing and everything, even friggin' aliens. Yeah, nothing like getting a rated R movie and marketing it to kids. Makes a lot of sense. Ooh, Starship Enterprise. I would have loved that, but of course, that was never in the cards. Next Generation Transporter. Figures disappear and reappear with transporting sound and light of. <laughs> Dude. Toys R Us had the secret to transporter technology in 1993, and they didn't tell anybody. They just kept it to themselves to transport figures, apparently. Toon Turtles. I don't remember the Toon Turtles. We definitely had the, uh, you know, the just normal ones, whatever those were. They didn't look like that. These look really kind of silly. They look more like the cartoon. But yeah, the other ones were cool, man. Their eyes were whited out and stuff. Had the turtle van. Ooh, Stretch Armstrong. That was cool. Those were fun. <laughs> Eventually they stretched too much though and didn't go back. So that was a thing. Friggin' Megatron tank. That's still cool. Probably like all collectible and crap right now. Ah, here we go. Tiger Electronics handheld games. I wanted all of them and all I ever got was baseball. But you know, that's fine. The Aladdin one looked cool. Street Fighter 2. I mean, you know, I just... I wanted anything gaming in a portable form. The weird thing is, these all sucked, and then when I had the option to get, like, good ones in a Game Boy or something, I didn't. I would put my money towards PC games instead. 
And you know what? I suppose that was the smarter move. Uh, <laughs> at least for what I became interested in later in life. Man. These expensive Super Nintendo games. $70 for Street Fighter 2 Turbo. $60 Super Mario All-Star. All $70 for Tecmo Super NBA Basketball. My goodness. Still, though, $89.99 for a Super Nintendo in 1993. That's not bad. I didn't know they were that cheap. Dang. Ah, Game Boy. I was always jealous of that. Like I said, I wanted the, you know, the Tiger Electronics things, but Game Boy was obviously better. Never had a Game Boy. I still have never. I have one now, but it's not, you know, like, I've never played anything on it because you can't see a damn thing on that screen. You can see a little bit better on the color Game Boy. I have played that quite a bit. And uh, the Game Boy Advance. That's, that's always fun. Sega Genesis looks like same price as the uh, SNES, which is pretty sweet. $65 for WWF uh, Royal Rumble. Why the heck? Yeah, these sports like licensed tie-ins are the most expensive games around. That's fascinating to me. It's weird because those are the ones that you find like the most in like used game stores and Goodwill and whatever, and yet they were the most expensive. <laughs> Maybe they were just the newest at the time of this printing. I'm not sure. I never bought console games back then. I, you know, I just never even got a console until like the late 90s. And uh, it was way old by that point. Ooh, Sega CD. New! Play interactive full motion games with CD quality and aw awesome? Awesome? <laughs> they misspelled that. A-W-S-O-M-E video. Hmm. Includes Sewer Shark Game CD. Wow, it's the bargain of the 20th century right there. Game gear, all-important, rechargeable battery pack. <laughs> you need, like, five of those for any road trip. Oh, crap. I borrowed a Game Gear at one point. Uh, it was around, like, 1999. Had pole position for it, and that was it. And <laughs> I tried it once with the, all the batteries in there, and it was like, Nope. So, rechargeable battery pack, and that didn't even last long. It was just a, what a disaster. It was a fun little thing, though. Jeez. $49.99 for the uh, top loader NES. Man, if you could go back now and pay, I'd pay like twice that nowadays for like one complete in box. I mean, and still be getting a great deal. Like, I, these go for quite a bit from last time I checked, anyway. Yeah, man. Oh, here we go. That's it. That's pretty much the end. Man, this is just an absolute blast. I love these magazines like this. It just makes me happy. I would love to find more. In fact, I used to have a lot of uh, Best Buy catalogs and CompUSA stuff from the 90s, but I, I, they're packed away somewhere. I've got to find them. If I ever do find them, I promise to do some videos on them. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this. And as always, thank you very much for watching.